You're watching the New Stack Makers, a podcast for people who develop, deploy, and manage at scale software. For more conversations and articles, please visit the newstack.io. Now on with the show. KubeCon and CloudNativeCon conferences gather adopters and technologists to further the education and advancement of cloud native computing. The vendor neutral events feature domain experts and key maintainers behind popular projects like Kubernetes, Prometheus, Envoy, Core DNS, Containered, and more. Hello, and welcome to the latest edition of the New Stack Makers podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about uh, KubeCon, KubeCon and Cloud Native Con uh, US. North America being held uh, October 25th through 28th in Detroit. And uh, our guests today are Priyanka Sharma. She's the executive director at the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, the organization that uh, organizes KubeCon, as well as Ricardo Rocha, who is a computer engineer in, at CERN and uh, one of the participants in KubeCon. Uh, welcome. Thank you so much for having us, Joe. Very nice to be here again. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thank you for uh, uh, giving us the lowdown on uh, this year's KubeCon. I know uh, the new stack will be out there in force as well as many other uh, 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 media properties. So we're interested in getting a little bit of a glimpse of what we might expect. Uh, let's dive right into the questions. First of all, uh, I would imagine that uh, as KubeCon, or I'm sorry, as Kubernetes uh, goes into the enterprise that there are a lot of new uh, uh, participants in this year's KubeCon, as well as, as well as a lot of observers who are interested in this Kubernetes uh, cloud-native computing thing. Uh, I was wondering, could you uh, maybe offer a definition for those uh, new? Uh, what is the uh, appeal, the potential appeal of Kubernetes and cloud-native computing for the enterprise? Absolutely. Um, the, the success story of Kubernetes speaks for itself. At this point, we are um, reaching reaching a point where Kubernetes is becoming the de facto standard when it comes to container orchestration. And there's a reason for it. One is that it's not just about Kubernetes. Kubernetes spawned the cloud native ecosystem. And the heart of the cloud native movement is building fast, resiliently, observable software that meets customer needs. So ultimately, it's making you a better provider to your customers, no matter what kind of business you are. And especially in times like these, that becomes even more important. And so that there was the, this business value prop has always been there. But Pairing very well with that is the fact that Kubernetes is was built, uh, started at Google, which really pioneered uh, in for the modern infrastructure way, which really put the developer experience first, which really thought up the concept of uh, site reliability engineering. And so being uh, so closely tied to the developer ecosystem, del delighting engineers, and while everybody knows, yes, there's a learning curve, but the overall experience end-to-end -end is good for engineering organizations. Tie that with the business benefits, and there's your reason for why Kubernetes is essential for enterprises today. So uh, earlier this year, uh, KubeCon was held in Valencia in Spain. And I'm kind of curious, uh, what was the takeaway for CNCF, for uh, Kubernetes users? What was the, um, I guess, the sentiment coming out of Valencia earlier this year? The number one sentiment was paellas are awesome. <laughs> um, but really, uh, I think Valencia was an amazing experience for me. And I'm eager to hear what regard Ricardo says as well. Um, it was our second uh, event, a uh, hybrid event where we came back with a large in-person element. There were over 7,500 people in attendance in person and then lots on uh, virtually. Um, and the energy we saw there really cemented to me how the cloud native ecosystem is essential for engineering organizations, regardless of company type. Um, and I think I really saw it for as a precursor to what's coming with Detroit, which is now we know that we are the right way to build technology. And now let's keep building for the road ahead, whether it's bumpy, whether it's smooth, cloud native is the scaffolding of the future. 
Yeah, I, I, I would build on what Priyanka just said and also uh, would stress that w- one thing that was really interesting was uh, the number of new people that were attending, the number of people that were attending for the first time. Uh, I think it was uh, 65% of the people were actually first uh, first attendees to a KubeCon event, which is also kind of uh, linked to the two years we had before, but still, uh, still a lot of interest being built. And the second uh, thing I would also add is uh, is the sense of community. Like we, we had a two year gap between in person events. Um, a lot of people that got into the community during this period uh, probably never had met uh, all the 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 other members that they got used to talk to and interact with. So that that was really nice to see everyone get together and um, and con- build on this. Yeah. All right. All right. Fantastic. Now, Detroit has a rich uh, a cultural history uh, and manufacturing and technology history as well. But uh, we don't really think of it as a conference town, per se. It's not like the usual places uh, conferences are held at. Why did we uh, choose or why did you choose uh, Detroit? <laughs> yes, uh, Detroit is having a renaissance at the moment. We uh, in cloud native cloud native building foundation when we're looking at potential venues we want to explore different cities go to different cultures and really you know meet people well there where they're at you said like you know detroit has a great historied history right with manufacturing being a big part of it manufacturing is booming in the u.s again Uh, in addition there's just if you look at uh, time magazine they said it was one of the top cities to visit in 2022 um Personally, I am a huge foodie and the food, it's becoming a food mecca over there. So that really kind of did it for me. I mean, Detroit style pizza is why I'm going. It's, it's reimagined itself. We, we want to show up there and have a great experience, be in a different part of the world and just, you know, break stereotypes. Detroit is for conferences too, is what we're saying. So how many people are you anticipating for this year's event? Um, up to 8,000. Okay. Terrific. Terrific. And uh, uh, it, uh, will you also have virtual options again for those who uh, can attend? Yes, absolutely. I think we've learned that how really virtual options, you know, level the playing field, give a lot more people the opportunity to attend. As time is going on, we're seeing more and more people prefer in person because, of course, right, as Ricardo was saying, for two years, no one could meet. So, the energy is more in person, but uh, the virtual option remains. Nice, nice. And uh, uh, KubeCon's always it always has some fun extracurricular activities. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are some of the things that you're doing this year to maybe uh, uh, provide a little uh, a levity in between the in between the technical sections? Um, yes. So, I mean, there's so much fun stuff. I don't want to spoil it all, but there's going to be you know some locals from uh, Detroit area who is going to who are going to give us all a tour with um and the all attendee party this time is just rad it's multi uh, you know uh, multi venue all connected together one of which is a boat one of which is a skyscraper so it's going to be a really fun experience um we're also um hosting something new for the first time called CNCF Kids Day which is uh, primarily targeted at um, local children who may come from underrepresented uh, demographics. And uh, folks from the community are going to be giving them uh, a, a sort of a tutorial in cloud native using Raspberry Pis and Minecraft. So that's really exciting. Attendee kids are actually also welcome to attend. So if anyone's listening and interested in bringing your child, please reach out to the events team. And I'm so looking forward to that one because, you know, we're bringing the the future, the literal future into the conference that way. All right. Excellent. Excellent. So let's get down to the the heart of the show. Uh, What will be, what do you you both think will be the major themes uh, for uh, this year's uh, KubeCon? Yeah, I can, I can start with that one. So I, I think security remains as a, a heavy topic in the, we can see this in the submissions and, and in the schedule as well. Uh, there's a lot going on uh, with uh, with a lot of new projects that have joined the CNCF in the last couple of months or in the last year. 
so we, we can see also in the co-located events, uh, SecurityCon has been uh, growing significantly. I, I don't know what the number was, but I think they had, for the colo, they had something like over 300 submissions just for the co-located. So, so that's definitely still a big topic. Uh, and then um, the other one that is still present is GitOps as well. This has been there for, for a, a bit longer, I, I would say. The one I'm really looking forward to, which is a new thing, is uh, called ContribFest. And um, this is a new type of session uh, that has been added and uh, where projects will go beyond what they were doing in the maintainer track, uh, just giving updates. And they will try to offer an environment for a bit longer period uh, where new contributors or existing contributors can join and learn more about the contributing process uh, to those projects. I think that will help a lot uh, to, to try to engage more people in, into into participating in this project. So I'm, I'm really looking forward for, to see how that goes. Huh. So how does that work? Uh, if I'm a, uh, I am see a, uh, a, a bug in Istio or some other CNCF project and I go to uh, one of these contributor workshops and they give me the lowdown of how to work with that environment, I guess? Yeah, exactly. So the, the, there will be an environment where uh, there will be groups of people formed and then there will be the, the maintainers for the project guiding them and uh, kind of giving some some uh, introduction how to contribute a bit of uh, the overview of how the development in the project works. And then even if you don't have a bug that you found, they will probably give you some ideas on uh, uh, contributions that you can work on. And one thing we are uh, we will try to track is to see how many actual contributions we get uh, from from these sessions in the end. So this is uh, I'm pretty excited about it. All right. Yeah, me too. It's, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, <laughs> I am also super excited about Contrib Fest, and I think it highlights a key focus that we have with this KubeCon, and we've always had it, but especially so this KubeCon, which is supporting maintainers, especially as we build for the road ahead, as we build for a bumpy road ahead. Our lifeblood in cloud native are the contributors and maintainers and everything we can do to um, help help boost the uh, contributor experience is critical. So ContribFest, as Ricardo said, right, it's it's perfect, perfect new initiative designed to project, provide projects with space and resources to tackle outstanding technical debt, security issues or impactful features, right? Anything. Uh, there's also Security Slam, which is very focused on security specifically, where uh, for, there'll be prizes and incentivization for folks to come in and um, work on the security of various projects. And I think that uh, over time, we want to keep building on these types of things uh, so that KubeCon Cloud Native Cons, which are one of the largest open source conferences in the world, we, we pool our energies and build up our projects and maintainers and contributors while we're there. Something that, that really struck us is there seems to have been a uh, explosion of co-located events. A lot are happening on Monday and Tuesday, though I guess they're happening all week. But uh, uh, and a lot of these subjects are, of course, for cloud native topics, uh, such as WebAssembly. Um, but uh, what, is the, what is the organizational thinking uh, in relation to co-located events? I mean, are how do you choose to um, uh, make a talk part of KubeCon versus make it uh, have it uh, part of another uh, uh, co-located event? Or how should we think about these co-located events? Sure, I'll chime in quickly and then, of course, let Ricardo speak uh, on his extensive experience at, as co-chair. Um, so co-located events are a great way to know what's exciting to folks in the ecosystem right now. And as I was telling you, Cloud Native has really become the scaffolding of future progress. So you see more and more co-located topics coming up because people want to build on Cloud Native but have their own focus areas, right? Uh, Wasm is a great, uh, great example, like you said, right? In the beginning, you wouldn't have thought of WebAssembly as part of the cloud native narrative, but like here we are because the same thinking, the same professionals who um, conceptualized cloud native in the beginning are now taking it a step further. And now we're talking WebAssembly. Uh, and there are so many other, <clears throat> I think our uh, our connection points with uh, uh, machine learning and uh, AI ops, et cetera, is just getting stronger and stronger. So you see all of that demonstrated in the colos that happen. 
of course, I do agree. It's it's exploding. There's a lot right now. And we as CNCF are definitely looking into ways to streamline this for our attendees in 2023 and beyond. How can we kind of, you know, graduate co-located events that are just really so big and popular, they could be self-sustaining events. How can we have other areas where colos can happen? So this is a strategy in process. Um, and as far as the content goes, the uh, CFPs are actually separate for colos versus the main event. And with that segue, I'll let Ricardo tell you more about how the content story plays out. Yeah, so I I think Priyanka said all, but uh, I'll just add uh, on the content. So basically, uh, people are actually allowed to submit uh, the same talk to both the main event and the colo. And then they, if we, we do track between them if there are overlaps and then they are given preference and usually they will prefer the main event. But but I think from, from an attendee point of view, there's also a lot of value in this co-located because you get uh, a group of people for a longer period in the same uh, room uh, focusing on one topic. Uh, on the other hand, it's also important to have this uh, type of talks. Like, let's take security again to also have them in the main event because you might have end users that want to check a bit of security, but they want to check GitOps. They want to check uh, some some stuff about scientific computing. So uh, I think it, it's the balance, and uh, it will it will be something to to reevaluate in the next couple of years. But uh, but it's uh, I think there's value in both. All right. All right. Uh, so uh, I'll ask Ricardo this question first, because I know you're involved with the keynotes. But uh, what will we be watching for during the keynotes this year? Right. So uh, there will be there will be quite a diverse uh, set of talks. There will be a, a bit about GitOps that we mentioned. There will be some there will be a very cool talk that I'm looking forward to about dissecting the world's most, most popular containers. That's something that uh, it's always interesting to see uh, uh, when people get their hands dirty, uh, looking at what people are actually using and, and giving reports about this. I think it will be very interesting. There's also a sort of uh, uh, kind of motor city theme that uh, that will pop up. I think uh, maybe Priyanka wants to, to extend on that, but I think it will be quite, quite nice to see that uh, given the, the venue. Absolutely. Yes. The Motown theme is going to like, you're going to see it in everything from talk descriptions to that, as I was telling you, the local, two locals from the community are going to be uh, giving us a bit of a tour of Detroit. Uh, and that's going to be, I don't want to ruin it all. So I'm not saying everything about it, but the, it's the, the fun element is really robust this time around. And so is our effort to give back to the community that we're participating in. So, for example, uh, I already told you about Kids Day, which the first target is um, children from underrepresented demographics that are local. The second thing we're doing, we're partnering with the Detroit uh, CVB, which is their local kind of commerce uh, commerce organization, uh, on a diversity event. Uh, it's on Tuesday, October 25, and it will be resume writing workshop and a mini job fair with local Detroit businesses. And this is going to be open to the scholarship recipients and locals who are from underrepresented demographics in uh, Cloud Native or generally the technical community. And uh, as part of this effort where CNCF is actually offering 50 tickets to KubeCon Cloud Native Con to the local organizations that are promoting diversity, equity, inclusion, and technology. So I think this time, what I really feel strongly about this upcoming KubeCon is how well-rounded of an experience we have created where we have the deep technical stories and conversations that Ricardo, Emily, and um, uh, and others have, cre- uh, have uh, curated. And then we are really giving back as much as we can to, our, to the ecosystem we're participating in with DEI efforts and localized efforts. So I'm very proud of that. Excellent. Excellent. Now, uh, I usually go, I, I enjoy the technical tracks the most. Uh, what are some of the ones that I should keep an eye out for? Uh, I, I can give it a go, but unsurprisingly, uh, I, I plan to spend whatever time I have available uh, going to a lot of uh, talks about uh, um, the, my field, which is research and academia. There's, there's actually a dedicated track since Valencia about this, so a lot of of workloads about batch, AI, ML, HPC. But actually, I think the ones that are 
really vibrant as well is uh, things like EPPF that starts appearing uh, a lot in the networking side, but also observability and security. Uh, so I think there will be quite a quite a lot of nice talks about the, about that uh, with projects like Falco, Cilium, and end user reports on those projects. Uh, and then hybrid deployments. I think uh, it's something that uh, we've seen growing, and uh, there's a lot of interest still. So um, the number of solutions uh, or options is quite large. So it's always interesting to see uh, what people come up uh, with. So I think uh, the the hybrid on-premises bursting or just fully hybrid solutions is, is also something to follow. Or I will yeah. follow. <laughs> I personally have been uh, looking through, you know, project specific areas that are really interesting to me. Um, just recently, I gave a talk where I was where I looked up, you know, which are the highest velocity projects in CNCF. And as of now, number one is Kubernetes. Number two is open telemetry. And number three is Argo, the, you know, quadruplets in Argo. And I and this I think of course, Kubernetes is a focus, but Otel and Argo are great projects to pay attention to. The velocity speaks a lot because it means that very a ha- lot of contributions happening from a diverse set of people. So you that tells you this is getting more and more important to more and more folks. So good to go pay attention to what's going on uh, in these projects. There's going to be some upcoming news from Open Telemetry too, which uh, I'm not going to say the details too much to kind of you know ruin it. But pay attention is what I'd say. Uh, then, you know, Spiffy and Spire projects, which have a hand in the security story, which have a hand, you know, identification, all of that. They uh, officially graduated just like nine days ago on September 20th. Uh, and they're joining the other graduated projects we host. So there's a lot of momentum there. Um, I think people know that, uh, well, officially yesterday, uh, Istio is a part of uh, CNCF as a, an incubating project now. So there's a lot of in specific projects having a lot of uh, sort of a burst of energy right now. And I would strongly urge anybody who is coming to KubeCon, Cloud Native Con, to check these folks out. Because what tends to, what can happen sometimes is, especially when you're a first time attendee, right? Like the 65% at Valencia, your entry point may have been Kubernetes. And so you might get caught up in just that. But I strongly urge diversify. Look, go to talks from all these various projects. And I named a few to like kind of, you know, uh, direct people a little bit. And that will give a more uh, comprehensive overview of cloud native and arguably be very helpful for any attendee. Nice, nice. So the emphasis on security and observability, uh, uh, it strikes me as these are two things that you need to have uh, if you want to put Kubernetes in the enterprise. Uh, is, is so is this an indication of, uh, I guess, the maturing needs of Kubernetes? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I would say, and to add to what you said, observability, security, and also like, as Ricardo was saying, right, GitOps is kind of a thing now. It's because software delivery uh, is really important. And uh, we don't want to just think, is it GitOps, is it not? We, you just want to think holistically from software development to deployment, uh, continuously delivering. Uh, and that is just as important a part. And that is, yes, the, cl- the Kubernetes ecosystem has super matured. You, it's basically emp- encompassing the entire software de- development and delivery lifecycle at this point. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I would second that. And uh, especially in the uh, uh, focusing, we, we mentioned security. That, that's an area where uh, from the start uh, or a few years ago, containers, there were a lot of questions about security and containers. And I think this this has shifted shifted completely to a notion that with containers and Kubernetes and cloud native, you actually might improve your security processes because the tooling is being built uh, in a way that, uh, that that is very well integrated and it's offering a, a really uh, full solution uh, for your security needs, supply chain, uh, uh, CV checks, vulnerability checks, the whole, the whole, the whole process you need. So I think it's it's something that has really showed how how the the environment and the ecosystem has evolved towards the the needs of the users. Nice, nice. It sounds like cloud native is going beyond its roots of provide, providing uh, uh, a more efficient form of compute and also providing these additional benefits uh, such as developer productivity and uh, security as well. 
I would say that if you look at the cloud native definition, that was our vision from the very beginning is that this is going to go way past, you know, optimizing compute. Uh, it was very much of building fast, resiliently and uh, with minimum toil. Um, and I think that that definition has really stood the test of time. Uh, and it's demonstrating, uh, it's all demonstrated in this expansion that we're seeing. Now, something we've been seeing, I mean, just really recently at the new stack is uh, a lot of interest in platform engineering, uh, whether or not it's a successor to DevOps or if it's an entirely different thing. But uh, platform engineering, when I think about Kubernetes and cloud native computing, what is the intersection? How can cloud native computing support the goals of platform engineering? I absolutely agree with you. We're seeing a lot of momentum around platform engineering teams. And I think it makes a lot of sense because um, just the cloud native ecosystem, right? It's 140 projects plus. There's a lot of tooling options out there for all the various engineers um, in their, all the companies. And we have reached a point of maturity where you need to have the ability to experiment, try new tools, and also the guardrails to successfully utilize technologies and tools for the benefit of an organization. Um, I think in the past, IT departments or, you know, sysadmins uh, and that those roles used to do a lot of that work. But now with the change in the type of professional who thinks about the end-to-end -end software development, deployment, delivery, you need engineering mindset, setting the guardrails, setting the guidelines on how to participate in a burgeoning ecosystem of proprietary and open source tooling available to build build your software or build technology, I should say, because it's seeping into hardware as well. Um, and so I, I think it's a very effective way to keep the engineer voice first and yet bring some maturity to processes in organizations by having platform engineering tools, uh, sorry, teams. Um, and actually, uh, one of our previous co-chairs, uh, Jasmine James, has held that kind of role like all kinds of companies from like Delta to Twitter to now Square. And uh, she's an example of someone bringing cloud native to different diverse engineers by holding that role of platform engineering. And she's not the only one. There's so many cool professionals and teams out there. So I highly recommend any organization to consider a platform engineering team. All right, fantastic. Uh, we, we should wrap up pretty shortly. Are there any other takeaways about this year's KubeCon that you guys would want to share with our audience? I would like to say this KubeCon is for everybody. Uh, please consider attending show up in Detroit. Detroit is an awesome place. I promise it's booming. You will love it. Let that not stand in your way to attend. And if there's any way the organization CNCF can help you and support you in attending, you please feel free to reach out to us. We're here to make the event as accessible as we can to anybody and everybody. Brilliant. And yeah, I, I also hope everyone that can make it will make it. I'm really looking forward to meeting new people. I'm sure we'll keep, we'll keep those uh, those statistics we have in Valencia with newcomers and new people getting involved. So it's always very exciting. I'm sure everyone will have a really good time. All right, fantastic, fantastic. Again, KubeCon uh, North America is uh, October 24th through 28th, and it's not too late to register. And uh, uh, Priyanka and Ricardo, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, uh, give us the early scoop on what's happening there. And uh, listeners, thank you for joining in, and we'll see you at the next episode of the New Stack Makers podcast. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're on all the major social media platforms. You can always find us at thenewstack.io. We hope to see you soon.